Camera speed, Robert, thank you. Scared stiff. You're a fan, I hear. Yeah, I'm so. a big fan. Let's jump in. When did you first see Scared Stiff, and why did you develop such a deep affection for it? So, I live in Houston, and I stumbled across one of the last video stores in Houston. Uh, it actually didn't close until 2012, but I didn't discover it until 2004. So, at the time, DVD was already, had been around for a while, and I walk into a store with 87,000 VHS titles, to rent in 2004. So it started out with, um, I, you know, hadn't seen a, a store like that in a long time. Hollywood Video had already, you know, Hollywood Video, Blockbuster had already ruled the rental market and even it was in a decline or becoming to that point. And this video store had everything. It was called Audio Video Plus. It still had all of the original 80s, uh, video standees and, and props and things like that that they got from over the years still on the wall. So it was like a capsule in time. And uh, I came across Scared Stiff in that store and, uh, you know, took it home and watched it. And to be perfectly honest with you, it was the soundtrack that got me hooked. It started out with really wanting a copy of the soundtrack that had not been released. I sought out the composer and, of course... He doesn't have the master tapes anymore. So one thing led to another with not being satisfied with that. And uh, now we're here. That's great. So for people who don't know, you have a massive collection mm -hmm. of memorabilia, pieces. Pro so what? how did you start that? So, I mean, you kind of started with the soundtrack, but bring bring us kind of where how it expanded into everything. eBay. <laughs> it's a constant search on eBay for the past 10 years. I've managed to get... A uh, couple of test posters. I have foreign. I have American. I have a Japanese VHS, American VHS, Greek VHS, and German. Um, I just kind of seek these things out, and I usually keep an eye out for it every time I'm on eBay. And if I see something that I don't already have, I usually just pick it up. But the coolest thing that I have is a uh, paperweight that uh, Republic Pictures dist distributed uh, whenever the movie came out on home video. And a button. <laughs> is all of this stuff here? Yeah, it's okay, all here. Okay, cool. So it'd be nice to cut into this stuff as yeah. you're talking about it. It's great. Um, so when did you first... I'd imagine tracking this stuff down eventually led you to Dan. Actually, no. I was already collecting all this stuff before I even decided to start tracking down crew members. I never really expected to get this far with it. Um... I basically decided to track down the producer, Dan, after I had gotten a hold of the composer and he didn't have the master tapes for the soundtrack anymore, which I wasn't satisfied with that. So I decided to to do more, and that's where Dan came in the picture. It took a while, but it produced something. So Now, what year is this that, that, that took place? And, and can you kind of say, like, you when did the idea of getting this re-released come out? Like the idea of this getting released was about five years ago in 2013. Um, and really the idea was after I started seeing Arrow Video release these kinds of titles and other companies that do the exact same thing for the fan base. But it was really put into motion after I got a hold of Dan and explained to him that there was a market for this type of product. And it, that's whenever the wheels went into motion. It was a long process. I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Chris McGibbon because Chris McGibbon was the one who located the original negatives for this movie, and then it actually became a real possibility, but because before we had that property, it wasn't a possibility. We didn't even know if it still existed. So once it was found, that opened up a whole you know, opportunity for us. Do you know the details of where he found it and how? It might be boring for some people, just in case. I can look over there and we can edit it out, right? Yeah. Dan, do you remember where we found it? Yeah. Pittsburgh? Found it to Oh, that's right, from public to Orion to MGM. Right, and went from it. With, Chris backtracked it from Republic to Orion to MGM as property sold off over time. And my understanding was it was in it was in their vault in Pittsburgh. And lo and behold, there was a lot of stuff in those boxes after thirty years. Which even I was surprised uh, to find that stuff out. So now, when you say that, you're talking about negatives, interposit, like there were. The original elements. There was a lot of 
foreign pieces. I think there were foreign trailers there, but even more interesting, there was over a thousand ad slicks in there. There was um, several negative slides still left over for the promo images. There were, it was different formats too. So you got original negatives, you got inner positives, you got 35. It even had um, three quarter inch tape, which I'm actually fascinated with three quarter inch tape. Uh, but they had three quarter inch tape versions, and most of those three quarter inch tapes, I think, were foreign trailers. But that's probably that's probably a, a master copy that got distributed, you know, throughout the world for those trailers, or maybe even for that copy of the movie. I know that the Japanese is the only one that is subtitled, whereas uh, the Spanish and the Greek are actually they redid all the audio, uh, for, you know, for the for the language instead of giving it a subtitle. So. Who knows? But there was a lot of foreign stuff in there, and there was a lot of ad slicks, and there was even a couple of um, mock-up paintings uh, for the original ad campaign. So that was pretty. That was kind of like striking a gold mine. Promo images, black and white, and color. So it's a lot of stuff in there after 30 years. Yeah, and it seems like if they were doing foreign dubs, you might even have the DME stems, the dialogue, music, and effects. So did you ever find your music track? I, I asked if if it was in there. I saw a list of what was in there. I didn't see anything about a music track because that was the first thing that I wanted to know. It's kind of a shame, too, because that's really what I really wanted to begin with. And, and it... it I believe he's being interviewed for this, but the composer told me that he was using a uh, when he when he wrote the score for the movie, the master tapes were by a brand of machine called Akai, and that particular model of mastering machine mastered them to VHS tapes, which is a terrible idea. I don't know why anybody would think that's a good idea, and for better or for worse, that's what they were put on. So even. Even if he had kept them, they'd probably be in really bad shape by now. So it's kind of a shame. But I was hoping there would be something in those negative boxes for the music. So maybe we'll get a treat from Billy Barber on, on the uh, audio. So That'd be cool. I hope so, yeah. And at least VHS, if it, it's still analog. Worst case, if you could capture it just once. Like it's, some version. By the way, the sound is in mono. It's mono. Well, did he do the music? Did he ever no, no, so so you know, like when you look at the audio format on Internet Movie Database, it's mono. And it's for 87 and mono is still, you know, but if that's the way it went, that's the way it went. But it sounded great when we listened to it earlier today, so. Pretty great. So why do you think, I'm guessing you, like, you know Chris McGiven and them, you must have met a lot of kind of super fans of not just this, but other films that most people have just never even heard of. Even aficionados don't really know this film because it... Absolutely. It, so what, what is it about this movie? I'll tell you. I'll tell you exactly what it is about this movie. Of course, the first thing is the soundtrack and the music. Okay. Oh, I just moved. No, no, I'm sorry. I didn't want to. I have it right as the mic is just cut out, but I didn't want to lose you jumping into this. Sorry. No, it's all right. Okay, so yeah. I'll tell you exactly what it is. It's not only the soundtrack, but um, it's a mysterious movie. Uh, it, 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 for a lot of years, you watch it and you still sometimes okay, what was this for? What was that for? But. It was very mysterious for a very long time. Whenever I watched it, it was very apparent to me that uh, it it had some flaws, which I loved. That's actually what, what made it um, unique. It's not like any other ghost movie I've ever seen before. Um, it uh, A lot of the scares, to me, are creepy. I love the mansion in the movie. But it was really hard. I think what the, the, the driving point from the beginning was when I started looking on the Internet for any information at all, it was pretty apparent that there wasn't much. So that only fed the want to know more. Don't ask me why. <laughs> um, the, the, their last question is, is kind of your final thoughts. Um, what does it mean for you to see the movie? I mean, you know... What does it mean to you to see this restored? It's because it's a loaded question. You've already answered it. But. Well, um, Scared Stiff has been on a list of about 10 films over the years that I have always wanted to see released. And pretty much every one of them, except for two other ones, have been released. And Scared Stiff was at the top of the list. So to not only see it get released, but to be a part of it makes it that much more special. So I think it's pretty cool. And for everyone watching, the other two films are The Farmer and... Okay, what are the other two? The other two films uh, would be 
The Invisible Kid, 1988, which is a teen comedy. Have you seen that one? And believe it or not, The Dark Side of the Moon, 1990. Can't locate it. I've, I've managed to find the producer for for uh, The Invisible Kid. I just can't seem to get a hold of him. Dark Side of the Moon is something completely different. Can't seem to get a hold of any of those property owners. So. And at best, I think there's rips like Cinemageddon on those, like VHS, but that's it, right? Yeah, pretty, it's VHS to DVD yeah. boots. So, do you know those two titles? Absolutely, and okay. I love this stuff. Any any final thoughts? Anything else to say on this? We're gonna go through your collection and kind of okay. be cutting. What I'm gonna do for that is mount the mic and then just have you film you kind of going through it. Yeah, yeah, it sure. Just as your hands. Yeah, sure, that's I'll fine. Have you mic, so we'll hear sure. that as well. Um, you know, it, it, this, this was a labor of love for me for the past five years. And so I certainly hope everybody watching enjoys the, the labor and the love that I put into it. I think that it doesn't matter if a movie's good or if it's bad, if it's flawed or if it's not. I mean, how many bad movies were there from the eighties? Most of them were. So I don't really see that as, um, I, I, I doesn't factor in for me whatsoever. I think that this one was unique. And I hope I think I have always thought that it deserved a second chance at life. So I'm very glad to see that it's going to get to have one. Cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. I can get up. Yeah. All right, we are rolling. We'll, we'll start there we'll and then come this way. Up. Start where? Start there, and I'll explain what those items are, and then just kind of come in. I'll explain what everything is, and then last, I will pull out these items here. So. Okay. And let me know when you're ready. I'm rolling. Okay, so what we have here is the CBS Fox German home video poster, which is why it's a little bit smaller. This was the, I believe, the American theatrical, or at least version one, or it was a concept artwork. Um, I'm not sure. I've never seen another one. This was also an American theatrical 27 by 41. I've seen a lot more of these. I'm thinking a lot more of that one ended up in the movie houses than this one. Um, these are the front and back of the uh, trade ad slicks that were in the box with the original elements of the film. So a lot of this was for the newspaper articles that were sent around. And this is another concept piece that was for foreign art, which is kind of funny because it's all in English. But anywhere else that you see it, it's not in English. These are original black and white stills. These are pretty rare. Um, I guess these are lobby cards, but I've never seen lobby cards printed on glossy paper. Doesn't mean they don't exist. But of course, um, as you can, yeah, I think that's what they sent to the movie houses as promo as well um, uh, with the original package. I got these on eBay as one set. Um, I saw one on eBay and I emailed the seller and said, how many do you have? And she said she had a set of eight. So I offered her $50 for it and she took it. <laughs> so these are original negatives that were given to me by Dan Buchanan for a lot of these promo images that we just saw here, which is kind of funny because these are all in color, um, which I don't own any color prints, but I do have the original negative. So I guess that's better. I can get them printed anytime. These are some smaller ones. Uh, uh, of the you know same stuff um, in color and smaller. I don't think they came from these negatives. I think these came from a different source. Um, then we have my VHS collection. This is the American release from Republic Pictures. This is the Japanese release. It's probably the rarest VHS I own. Start this one over again with the American. Okay, this is the American release. From Republic Pictures, and that's probably the most common thing you can find on eBay and Amazon. A lot of those went out. I mean, I seem to find those everywhere. This is the Japanese release. Um, this one was a little bit more difficult to get. I think I paid about $95 for this VHS that I can't watch because I don't own a PAL player. This is Greek, and I did order it from Greece, which incidentally, it, it's the same artwork from this concept artwork here, except it's in Greek. Another VHS I can't watch. This is the UK. And the UK version is um, a little more interesting because of the artwork. Um, uh, the artist has done a lot of um, work over the years. And all of his artwork looks very similar to this. Um, it's a pretty popular 
uh, poster, um, from what I understand, in the UK. I've got the German CBS Fox release with the alternate artwork. And I think it says the Voodoo Curse in English. And this was my first digital copy of Scared Stiff. It's a bootleg. It's, ob it's honestly VHS uh, burned onto a, uh, onto a DVD, but it was pretty, pretty well done. I give it a nice print on top. But it is the Japanese version, so it's got the subtitles in there. And for the rarest pieces that I own, when Republic Pictures distributed the film in America on VHS, it came with a paperweight and a button pin. And there's one on eBay right now for 125 but I got this one for a lot less. And the guy still won't take my offer for $75 for the second one. <laughs> And last but not least, a shout out to Beverly Sapphire. She sent me a piece of fabric left over from the salmon colored dress that Elizabeth Masterson and Mary Page Keller both wore. This is the last surviving piece of the wardrobe that anyone knows of. That's pretty cool. And that's it.